Hi guys, it's June 11, 2019, weather war report. God, I hate doing this, but I feel that it's important to understand that so many communities are underwater and, well, like this guy says, who is filming in Oklahoma, he talks of uh, mainstream media, they're just not reporting on what is happening. Let's just listen to a few minutes. But I want to thank everyone for posting videos on what is taking place in your areas. Um, otherwise, we would never know. Flood conditions of Avant, Oklahoma. Yeah, so on to the next house. I think it's the fourth, fifth house. You know, water line's been receding, but this is still how the yards look. I don't know if you heard at that last stop we had uh, people living in tents. You just see where people are tearing up their siding and tearing out their insulation and ripping up their floors. They're already trying to rebuild while their yards are still just basically underwater. And it's receded a little bit, but not enough to, you know, for me. That this would still be terrible. I mean, I'm sure it is for them, but how do you even, how would you even cope with this? I mean, you know, Feel like you can do this, and then you're losing a lot of money, but then you're not working, so you don't have any money, and it's just like this cycle that you can't get out of. Oh, Ow, my knees are. <laughs> yeah. A cycle you can't get out of. But he goes into homes. These guys have had to gut everything out of their house. There's literally nothing left in here. Just. The shovel, oh man, you can see where they've been pulling it out. Mattress, all their stuff, washer and dryer. Ugh. Right, I mean, the water's. Here it is, this is like six inches down, right here. And this is water right there. And this, like they said, this has been receding. The water has been. Yeah, this, uh, I don't know if you can hear the fans running or see them. This, house is not abandoned. This house still has power running to it. It is uh, still, I mean, this was someone's home and it didn't look like this, you know, two months ago, one month ago. Ugh. It smells so mildewy in here. They have all the fans on. They have fans in the windows pushing the air up and just, what? Heading out? All right. Apparently it's time to load up. I don't know, you can... Let me get this truck. I don't know, you can see this is here and it's like Tulsa doesn't know about it. Oklahoma doesn't know about it, it's not in the news. And then, but when you get out here and you just see it, you feel bad. How long have we been live? Oh, I, I'm doing, I stop. I like it in between the stops so they don't have like a 45 minute video to watch. You gotta keep it digestible. The masses. Okay, I'll link below to everything. Um, Tulsa. Tulsa doesn't know. Mainstream media focuses on the big cities. And then all of the smaller towns surrounding that big city, you, you have to really dig to find what's happening. Okay, um, Alton, West Alton, St. Charles, St. Charles, Missouri, Alton, Dick Durbin, Dick Durbin, I posted the video, I, yeah, I get something about lying, really, <laughs> really, it just, um, it's very upsetting. Missouri, Iowa, 
Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Arkansas, uh, Mississippi, Texas. Farming has been pretty much destroyed. The farms, the, the, the amount of farms, and I'm going to post a video because I've been collecting a whole lot of information. Farmers, just this year alone, most will not be able to recover because they were already suffering economically. This is, you know, this should be all over, all over Drudge. I mean, Drudge. Nothing on Drudge Report. Nothing. It's all the geopolitical crap that we get over and over and over again. The repeat, the issues that never ever get resolved. They're just used to stage the drama that an awful lot of Americans clearly love. Nothing ever gets resolved. And meanwhile, our fellow Americans are being destroyed on a daily basis. On a daily basis. More and more are getting destroyed. Millions upon millions of Americans have been destroyed even just within the last couple of years. And there's no attention paid to that. Oh, every now and then you get that big event, you know, Harvey, Houston, or the hurricanes. There's been some reporting on the flash flooding. How about all the communities that are still sitting in water? It's heartbreaking to see this. Farm after farm after farm, all being destroyed. You know, you think about these individual farmers. And yeah, I've got my problems about the pesticide use and, and you know, the, well, certainly how our animals are treated. That is just a general statement. Then you have to account for all of the individuals who really do respect and treat their animals well. So don't think I'm lumping everybody together. I'm not. But look at this destruction here. Look at this destruction. Farmers who've farmed you know, had farming these farms in their families for generations. I was listening to a video and it was posted by South Front China. Oh, I can't remember the the uh, title, the, the channel name on YouTube and it was all about the American farms being destroyed, the American farmers being destroyed with the trade wars and these weather events. And a farmer was talking about how, and this was in Minnesota. This year, yeah, we're not talking just, you know, mid-central United States. We're talking central United States. And he was talking about how he knew this year three farmers who killed themselves committing suicide. So it's bad, guys. It's really bad. And it's all over. All over. And it's not over. It's not over. 
here. This is in Georgetown, uh, Germantown, I'm sorry, Tennessee. And continue here on Pier Point Cove. This block really just remains a mess this evening. Three days after those heavy rains, you can see storage pods, piles of debris, and flooded cars are in this block. Neighbors here and in nearby subdivisions are slowly coming to terms with not only the growing costs, but uncertain future of their homes. I'll be shocked if by Labor Day we're back to normal. With the constant bangs and hammers of cleanup crews, normalcy seems far away for Susan Davidoff at her heavily flood damaged Germantown home of 12 years. It's emotionally exhausting. To make matters worse, Davidoff and her family don't have flood insurance. Heavy rainfall overwhelmed the drainage behind her backyard. It toppled this fence and showed no mercy, with water trickling in ankle high on her first floor. Huge. I mean, it's like stopped our whole lives, and we're, you know, it's going to be exceedingly expensive. A couple of miles from Davidoff's home, there's similar uneasiness for those living on Pier Point Cove. People have lost things that break their heart to lose them. Another drainage system behind this block couldn't handle last week's precipitation forcing homes to be gutted. No one would ever understand what this feels like. Unless they go through it, we wouldn't want to wish it on anybody. Yeah. Ain't that the truth. So, St. Charles, Missouri. My childhood friend lives in St. Charles. I visited him uh, years ago. You would never expect St. Charles to be flooded out. It is, but this is also Lincoln County. The, the flooding is tremendous. It's truly tremendous. Overwhelming. And when you think about all of these people all of these people, you know, even just one state, you're talking an overwhelm. But we're not talking just one state, multiple. And the states are adding up. More and more states, more and more are experiencing this. from flash flooding. They don't even, do they say thunderstorms? No, it's just flash flooding. The hurricanes haven't even begun. You know, God, I wish people would really start thinking about what's going on here and understand that yes, man is, man is causing this destruction. greatest strategy to sink Americans in a war is not to drop bombs or shoot guns at them because then they would unite. No, they bring war via weather. And and taking control of the food supply and poisoning the food with genetically modified organisms and putting an awful lot of pesticides and fertilizers and herbicides all poison poison the food poison the water poison the air flood them out create fires hit them with directed energy weapons, hit their homes, bring them to dust, and then insurance companies deny, 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 then they have to fight with insurance companies, fight with FEMA, and they never get what they deserve. All those premiums for years and years and years, 
they are never fully compensated. This was uh, just sent to me. This was a radar capture. You know that storm in Dallas that brought down that crane that did an awful lot of damage? This is what was caught. Look at this. Jeez. That's a big sonic burst. That's the radio. Yes. Massive bursts Jeez. That's a big of energy. Burst. That's the radio. In Dallas. I don't know what time this was. Jeez. That's a big sonic well, burst. Well, this isn't Dallas. I'm sorry. That's the radio. It's, uh, Dallas is right over here. Jeez. That's a big sonic burst. So. You're talking a pulse of energy that is so powerful, hey, that it takes a crane into an apartment building and kills someone. We're talking massive murder, too. This is in uh, Levesi, I think that's how you pronounce it, Missouri. D-I-E-C-K-M-A-N Road. I was said we can't get out of our property because it's flooded all the way up uh, to our halfway up our dually. Um, so we can't leave all the levees right behind us and it broke, so we can't get out. We need to be rescued. Definition only at this point. Fires en route to 2121 Dykeman Road. D121 Dykeman Road. Rosen for advising that the levee is broke and the water's up to their house now. They're unable to make it to their vehicle. Two adults, two children. Cars in route. Yeah, I'll feel too far in Cessna, Captain Shane, route. Nick, 25. D457, advise you as soon as you arrive. We'll have to get some resources out there. Good. Yeah, don't go north of the tracks. Uh, you'll get trapped out there, so. We'll be up there a few minutes. Just FYI, DJ's in the route with a uh, boat. Well, I talked to the troop, but it's kind of like they're going to dispatch a boat that way also, because we're going to have other residents that are probably happy. Copy, Trooper, advise as well. E45? 22, where do you want the drone when I get there? Can't go west on Lexington either. You can only use 24 to shoot, sir. It's over the road also. Where they've got the sandbag. Water is now going at a pretty good pace through there as well. East on Coswell is underwater. There's two houses on the other side of where it's going over the road. So, you know, the only road is passable and let the CT just choose the road. 1221 in route to the CT. He was that traffic for me. The affirmative, it's confirmed the track's out of service. This goes on for another three minutes. Yeah. We're looking at a lot of destruction. A whole lot. North Carolina. North Carolina, man. Flash flooding? Really? Rivers swell and water is moving as swift as rescues from first responders. Water rescue call. There's at least one person in the water screaming for help. Our camera's rolling as an elderly couple rode out of harm's way. Got it. I'm glad you decided. Thoroughfares in this mountain island community completely covered. We have a, uh, a little baby, so that's why we left last night. It's the bottom of bed, Rocky In Catawba County, relentless rain reminded people how powerful it can be. Water level was uh, over top of the couch, the washing machine, the dryer. A look from above in South Carolina showing rivers bursting at the seams, parts of tree trunks floating away. I have never seen it this bad. 
this is this is very different from what we've experienced in the past. Flood waters now forcing people to rebuild across the Carolinas. Mother Nature prompting North Carolina's most powerful to make note of her fury. But flooding can be dangerous and deadly. Okay, this guy knows about weather modification, Agenda 2030. Uh, look, you know, you would really expect people to understand that something is very, 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 very different when you continually hear people saying, never seen anything like it. When you see this kind of flooding, you know, take over communities all over the country. A flash flood all over the country? Um, that is unprecedented. Something else is happening. Well, what's happening is that man is doing this. Man is doing this. And, it, and wait for the hurricanes. This is a storm with rain. And we're hearing we're hearing three, four, five, six feet of water. where the water was. Right here. So there, it, it couldn't be more obvious that something else is taking place, okay? You have rain forecasted, and this is the kind of rain that you're getting all over the country, okay? So if it was really climate change, this would not be happening uh, overnight. It would come about incrementally, incrementally, sm no, you would not see radical flooding all over the world. This is not just happening here. Yeah, UK getting flooded out. So more forecast for the UK. So many countries. State leaders are urging everyone to be cautious as the rain continues coming down. In fact, some hometowns in the western part of the state saw upwards of 12 to 15 inches of rain. It's much more than what was expected. Highway Patrol says it's responded to about 4,000 calls for service. Governor Roy Do you see this tree? See how diseased this tree is with all of the fungal disease, the spraying operations taking place above our heads, yes, very uh, obvious that something is very wrong. No, you're not seeing contrails. What you're seeing are, well, in the vernacular, chemtrails, geoengineering, the spraying of toxic chemicals and heavy metals, barium, strontium, aluminum, lithium, and it's killing life. You're breathing all of those toxic chemicals and heavy metals. But so are trees, and they are dying. The Cooper says Swift Water Rescue Teams remain on standby right now across impacted counties and have performed more than 80 rescues since the torrential rains began. And it's not just human beings being rescued. Folks in the Mountain Island area of Gaston County were rescuing goats and several other animals, getting them to higher ground. Mountain Island Lake has reached its second highest level ever at above 104 feet. It's leading to all kinds of flooding issues across Gaston and surrounding Mecklenburg County. The record for the lake was set in 1940 at 109 and a half feet. Heavy rain is also to blame for a rock slide a few hours ago that's closed I-40 in Haywood County indefinitely. This is Again, in ah, 
just a couple of months ago. A rock slide caused I-40 to close. Now it's closed again. And I-40, a very important, very important um, route, you know, that, well, I've taken so many times to get to Tennessee. The Pigeon River Gorge, right near the Tennessee border. Traffic is being rerouted and crews have set up all kinds of detours. Back in February, if you recall, a landslide in the same area shut down I-40 for weeks. In addition to that, crews are still assessing the damage that the flooding has done to U.S. 401 in Wake Forest, which is both in Wake and Franklin counties. Now, this stretch of highway collapsed over the weekend. This is a major lifeline for Franklin County. Transportation Secretary Jim Trogdon says 70% of residents work in Wake County and take this exact route. They say U.S. 401 sees about 20,000 cars per day. And communities across Wilkes County are still dealing with flash flooding in some spots. Some folks have been using kayaks to get around. This is what the Miller's Creek community looks like. Just a few hours ago, we spoke with a mother and daughter about what was going through their minds while they were evacuating their homes on Sunday. Where, where am I going to stay? Where am I going to put my animals? Is my home going to be here when we get back? It was, it was very scary, um, just grabbing kids and clothes and medicine and, and running out the door. They say their homes, thankfully, were not damaged, but they know that others have not nearly been as lucky. Nope. And look at this damage to the roads. You, know, you would hope that people would, you know, really question what's going on here. Um, Rising water from days of rain spilling into roads, threatening homes and cattle. From up high, you can see just how dire the situation is. We caught an animal rescue in Gaston County, where you can see two men moving farm animals with a paddle boat. Eventually, they got their goats to dry ground. In Cramerton, part of 8th Avenue is submerged, the water getting dangerously close to homes as well. Across the river, Goat Island Park looks almost unidentifiable, the playground and slide barely above water. Even though most areas were dry earlier today, allowing already crested waterways to recede some, runoff from excess rain is still having an impact as fast-moving water spills over dams, the water dislodging this entire dock in Gaston County. Some areas have already seen a foot of rain since Friday, causing lakes to spill over. Duke Energy tells us that they're aggressively moving water through the river system, but with more rain moving in, it's going to keep water levels high for days. And even though the highest totals fell in the foothills, water flowing south into Mount Island Lake filled it to its highest level since 1940. Crews put up barricades on flooded roads, but some people still braving the high waters on Dallas Road, while others... While others turned around, so turn around and don't drown. Homelessness and hurricanes, the after effect of storms on poor populations. The after effect of rain. Yeah, the after effect of rain leaving an awful lot of people homeless. And hurricane season is not here. But this was uh, an interesting article. I'm going to read some of it. Statistics suggest that lower income Americans are more at risk for post-storm damage. This includes displacement. The end result, of course, is homelessness. Sadly, an astounding 14 million plus people become homeless every year as the direct result of extreme weather conditions. That's not, that's worldwide. Hurricane Michael, this is not worldwide, this is here. All right, so Hurricane Michael, 325,000 evacuated, but only 6,000 people sheltered. Poor people with less money, poor supplies, less insurance com coverage, and poorly constructed dwelling spaces were already at an extreme disadvantage. So when 325,000 residents departed from their homes, only the richest among them had access to proper evacuation supplies, which include money to leave, money to temporarily relocate a strong enough structure or insurance policy to secure the home front for the future, 
money to store prized possessions until the storm is over. In mid-October of last year, 1.3 million houses and business, business buildings had no power. Over 98,000 residents reached out to the government for help with housing. However, only about 18,000 received rental assistance. 98,000 residents reached out to FEMA. Only 18,000 received rental assistance. This happens over and over again. And I posted a video, was it on Kafka Winston World or was it on this? I don't know, but on this channel. Um, I posted a video showing you the numbers. After Harvey, how many people were getting assistance and how many people applied? And mainstream media continued to report that no, what are the tens of thousands of homes were flooded. It was over a million. And that came from FEMA's site. An easy statistic for mainstream media, and they don't report it. So 18,000 out of 98,000 receive rental assistance. Only about 6,000 were given a bed in the 80 available shelters, stretching from Florida to Virginia, with Georgia, Alabama, and the Carolinas in between tent cities. You heard that man talk about the tent, people living in tents, people living in tents. This was in Oklahoma after this community got flooded out. Tent cities rise above the wreckage. Bay County, Florida alone, approximately 20,000 people ended up homeless of which 7,800 still are. Tent cities rise up out of the wreckage, making the decimated landscape look even more bleak. Tens of thousands of people say they went without food in a never-ending wait for FEMA supplies. The cold November broke many hearts as shelters from new storms was nowhere to be found. One man spoke of the horror of trying to hold his tent down with his bare hands while soaking and dripping and feeling un seen. Perhaps being unseen isn't only a feeling in this scenario, considered the 1,000 plus residents who remained missing long after the hurricane had cleared. I see your comments, those of you who are writing, where are the people going? I don't know. I don't know. You know, people with families that are caring and loving and supportive are very lucky. There's an awful lot of people who don't have that. There are a lot of people who are alone and there are so many who, well, I've posted many videos on the economy. You know, like a huge percentage of Americans now can't even afford a $500 emergency. So how are they to recover? Many of these areas are not in flood plains, so they don't have flood insurance. Displacements caused by Hurricane Katrina, one million. One million people displaced. Hurricane Harvey, 30,000 plus. Hurricane Florence, 20,000 plus. Hurricane Maria, 135,000 plus. Hurricane Sandy, 20,000 plus. And the real statistics, we all know, are much higher. In the devastating aftermath of disaster, shell-shocked and newly homeless residents face even more obstacles if they survive their time on the streets. Shelters are often ill-equipped to handle the volume of newly displaced people. People construct tent cities due to a lack of viable alternatives. This means newly homeless people face social issues like criminalization and the isolated state of living unsheltered. But that's not all. Economic downfalls wait in the wings. So did you hear this man talk about in the very beginning? And he talks about, you know, suddenly, you know, your home is flooded out. It's destroyed. You may have flood insurance or not, 
even flood insurance, uh, very rarely pays out full. And you're looking at areas where not a lot of rich people live. I'm not saying that areas have not been flooded, but, you know, what we see right here, okay? And in North Carolina, Western North Carolina, those are areas that, you know, are not affluent communities. So, you're suddenly strapped, you're paying bills, you know, in this, uh, you know, paycheck to paycheck manner. Then you flood, flood it out. Um, you end up in a cycle that you can't get out of. You can't get out of. And this this is exactly what this man said. But most people think that if you can't get out of it, there's something wrong with you. Hmm. The judgment of the comfortable American. Insurance companies rarely, rarely offer affordable food coverage. Housing prices actually increase at the time when people need affordable housing more than ever. Unemployment rates skyrocket. Homeless homeowners of Hurricane Katrina, Katrina are those individuals who had completely paid off their mortgages when their houses were demolished. Traditional insurance did not cover these individuals for the disaster. Frustrating? It's frustrating to have your home destroyed after you finally paid it off. Frustrating? Oh, now that is an understatement, to say the least. Path of poverty from natural disaster. Uh, we know about Hurricane, I mean the Haiti. We know that the Clintons made a fortune off of off of their oh donate donate yes we care about the Haitians made a fucking fortune stealing that money and Haitians are still suffering now ten years after the disaster the city of New Orleans houses 100,000 fewer African American residents than it did during the pre-Katrina era and and I spoke of going down to New Orleans over a decade after Hurricane Katrina seeing neighborhoods abandoned homes FEMA FEMA promising that they would pay them for their homes and they were not paid a cent where did those people go? Pine Ridge Reservation yes post hurricane disaster aid nah we don't care about you no aid for you they're doing it again so it's very upsetting because more and more people are really suffering and it's it's happening on a daily basis.